Hello everyone, this is Church Girl, and today Church Girl is back in the kitchen, thanking the Lord for another day. Hope everyone had a good day today. Church Girl is making collard greens with mixed with kale, fresh collard greens mixed with kale. I already have them already chopped up the way I want them and all washed nice and clean. And here's my kale over here. There's my kale. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Church Girl is making collard greens mixed with fresh kale. I washed my collard greens already in water with uh, salt. And I use sea salt. You can use whatever salt you want to wash your collard greens in. I tend to use sea salt or whatever salt I have on hand. Just regular salt will do, but I like to put salt in my greens so that makes sure you get all the excess grit. If there's any grit on it, extra dirt, I want to make sure I get all that dirt off. So, hope everyone had a good day today. And Church Girl is back in the kitchen making fresh collard greens mixed with kale. There's my collard greens. Nice and washed and clean. Okay. And here is my kale. Now, those of you that have been knowing me for a while, you know I grow my own collard greens in my backyard. So in the winter time, I like to put them in the freezer so on off season I have plenty in my freezer. And if I don't have any, uh, or if I don't want to use any from my freezer, or I don't have any in my backyard, then I can just buy me some. But I prefer to eat my own fresh collard greens from my own backyard. When you grow your vegetables, that's the best thing for you. I keep dropping something here on the floor, so let me throw this out. So let's get started. Church girl is back in the kitchen again, cooking again. Back and grab for another day. Okay. I'm going to get these collard greens down in the pot now. And I hope you guys can see everything. I'm going to just put these collard greens. And by the way, I already had my stock and my, uh, my stock here that I want to use. And a little bit of water. I'm not going to put much water in my greens because um, I don't want to drown my greens out. So I'm I'm using before I put that in my put my greens in. I'll let you guys know I'm using smoked meat, smoked turkey, over in these greens along with some bacon. Smoked turkey and bacon is what I'm using in my greens. My water is, my uh, stock pot is ready, so I'm going to go ahead and put the greens in. Okay? Uh, when, you, when you're washing your greens, I tend to tell people to don't be in a big hurry because you want your greens as clean as you can possibly get them, all right? So that being said, make sure you wash them good. Use a little salt, and that salt will help take all that grit off of those greens and all the excess dirt and dust, okay? And when you put them in your pot, don't worry about piling them up because sometimes um, you pile your, your top up, put as much as you can in, and then green's going to cook down anyway. And once they cook down, once your green's cook down, you can always add more. Okay? Once your green cook down, you can always add more to the pot. Okay, that being said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover this pot and let these greens cook down. Start to... Start to um, Cook down a little bit, and then I'm going to come back, and I'll add some more. I haven't even added my kale yet. What I'll do, I'll let these cook down a little bit, and church girl is going to come back and add some more until I get them all in that pot, along with the kale. Now, while I got that cooking, I'm going to go ahead. I have some chicken breasts here. I wasn't going to do these chicken breasts on this video, but I'll go ahead. I have some chicken breasts that's been marinating in some seasoning, and I'm going to make some more marinara sauce with this chicken breast. I made a uh, steak the other night with my marinara sauce and it came out really good. So I'm gonna use the rest of my mushrooms and make some more marinara sauce. Cause I don't want my, I don't want to lose my mushrooms. So I'm gonna make some more marinara sauce and I'm gonna be making chicken breasts with that marinara sauce. Nice, nice chicken breast. What I did with this chicken breast, I washed it real good. I flared it out and I took my, uh, Little gadget here, my, my mallet. I have a little mallet here, just like this. 
and I put some foil, I mean, I put uh, saran wrap over my chicken, both sides, and I just beat it down a little bit to, to flatten it out so it won't be thick. Just like, let me rinse it off and I'll show you. Show you a little bit. I already did it, but I'll just show you again. I put some saran wrap down over my meat. Then I just went in and I just beat my meat down a little bit on each side, just like so, okay? I'm not gonna do the whole thing anymore because I've already, I've already did that and I have my meat nice and seasoned, so I don't wanna, don't wanna take all my season off. I just wanna show you exactly how I did the meat, right? Just like so, on both sides. If you get your, if you're using chicken breast and you flare your chicken breast out, that chicken breast too thick, just get you some um, saran wrap. I didn't put any on this, but I could have got some saran wrap put over it. And I just go right in and I make that very, very tender. I don't want to cut corners, so I'll go ahead and show you exactly how I did it. I got some saran wrap here. This is my saran wrap. I'm going to show you a little quick, um, a little quick, um, way I did it. My husband has saran wrap in the wrong thing. Okay, this is the saran wrap. The other one was the foil. So I, all I did, I just got some saran wrap. I really like these little gadgets, you guys. This is saran wrap. I got me a little saran wrap. And I pulled it over my chicken just like so. Take that off. Then I went in with my mallet. I just want to show you over again so you'll know exactly how I did it. I went in with my mallet just like this. And I'll show you this while my greens is getting started. And then I just nicely flatten that meat out. So your chicken breasts do not have to be so thick. You can get your mallet. And some people that don't have a mallet, they use a hammer. What they do with the hammer, they get the hammer and they put a piece of uh, saran wrap over it. It works just as good. Okay? Just flatten your meat out. Don't be afraid to hit it. Nothing's gonna happen to it. It's gonna, it's gonna tenderize it, make it much tender. And it's gonna flatten it out. Because you know, sometimes with chicken breast, on one end tend to be more, more uh, thicker than the other end. So just take your mallet and just flatten it right out. Okay, just like so. That's how I did that. And it flattens that meat right out. And that chicken, that chicken breast to cook up just as tender and won't be so thick on one end, okay? That way, your meat will tend to cook evenly, all right? I'm not going to do the other side. As I said, I pretty much had did it already. I just wanted to show you a little bit, okay? Just checking my greens here. They're cooking down so I can... I'll go in and add some more. Uh-oh. Pull a little bit out of the pot, but my stove is clean, so it'll be all right to throw them back in there. Always make sure the stove is nice and clean and keep your hands impeccable clean when you're in the kitchen cooking. And always keep you some nice hot dish water. Ready to go. Church girl believe in keeping a nice hot dish water. Ready to go. I'm going to go ahead now and add some more greens to this pot. What I'm going to do now, I think I'll add some of my nice, nice, really nice kale. I'll put them in the middle. And then I'll come back and add some more collards on top of those. On top of these when this cook down a little bit. I may add a little more water, but I'm going to wait a while because I do not want my greens swimming in water. A lot of times we tend to cook our vegetables overly cooked and then too many times we have, have it swimming in water, and I don't want too much water. I might add a little more water because I really didn't add a whole lot. Because I was going to fry these collard greens, but I think I had a little bit too many to fry. So while those collard greens are cooking up really nice, I'm going to go ahead now and get started with my nice chicken breast. First thing what I'm going to do is get some olive oil and a little butter. Okay. I'm going to use one of my favorite frying pans here. This is one of my favorite frying pans. I have plenty, plenty, plenty utensils, but you know how you have your favorite. So church girl have a favorite. <laughs> so now I'm going to go in and add some olive oil. I'll add all of this because this is not much. See, that's empty already. 
but I do have an extra bottle sitting out. I don't intend to run out of olive oil. I believe in using very, very good olive oil. This is Greek olive oil. And for cooking, your, for cooking with olive oil, you don't have to pay a whole lot for your olive oil. There are so many different kinds on the market. So I just tend to go in and make sure you get extra virgin olive oil, okay? Not going to put too much more, but I do want to put enough to cook that meat. Got to fry that meat down a little bit on both sides to get brown, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, make my marinara sauce. I'm going to add to that olive oil a little bit of my butter flavor Crisco. I was going to put plain butter, but I think I just used the butter flavor Crisco this time. The reason I add that to the olive oil because the butter flavor make, the, make your olive oil taste really, really good. It, give, it just gives it a better flavor when you're, when you're browning your meats or frying your meats. It really gives, makes a big difference. So usually I put butter, but this time I got butter flavor. Uh, Crisco, which is just as good. So now what I'm going to do, while my greens is cooking up here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lightly flour my chicken breast. I want to lightly flour my chicken breast because I want to brown it on each side. Okay, so I have my, have my flour here. So I'm going to lightly flour this chicken breast on both sides. So... Church girl is always glad to be in the kitchen. Thanking God for giving me strength. I didn't feel good, too good today. I really don't feel the best right now, but I'm just determined to uh, fix this meal. So I'm just going to lightly flour this chicken on both sides, just like so. Sometimes I just put the flour in a pan and I just put the meat over in there and turn it over on both sides, but doing it a little bit different this time. As long as I get the flour on, on both sides. Okay, I'm just going to lightly flour this chicken, just like so. Lightly on both sides. I don't want it to be smothered in flour. I just want it lightly floured. Lightly floured on both sides. That's how I want it. I don't necessarily want it heavily, heavily floured. But I do want it to be floured enough to give me a nice coating. I season this chicken with um, a little garlic powder, a little garlic salt. No, I'm sorry, I didn't use any salt. Not yet, no salt. Garlic powder, uh, onion powder, and I did use um, a little smoked paprika because I wanted this chicken breast to have a lightly, lightly smoked uh, taste, but not much because I'm going to make that marinara sauce. And I also added a little bit of my... Uh, Tonys and the Tonys is what give get giving me the salt that I need on this and it's also giving me a little um, Spice Instead of adding pepper black pepper. I added a little bit of Tonys and That Tonys is going to give me the heat that I need Okay, so I got this lightly floured now on both sides as soon as that oil Get nice and hot over here. I'm going to place that chicken breast Right over in the oil, I'm going to set this flour aside because I'm going to be using some more. Set that aside because I'll be using some more as soon as I get to make my marinara sauce. Go ahead and wash my hands real fast. Always keep those hands in pick up a clean. Oh, yeah. Just still believe in keeping those hands in prep, especially in the kitchen. Because you do not want to be passing around no cross-contamination and no bacteria. Okay. Making sure my dishwater stays nice and hot. Alrighty then. Okay, got my hands all nice and clean. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this chicken over here. And I'm gonna make sure that my oil is nice and I'm gonna test my oil by putting a little flour in. If you want to know whether or not your oil is hot enough when you're frying anything, get you a little bit of uh, flour and just put it in there. If that flour bubbles up, you know that oil is nice and hot and it's ready to be used. Mine is nice and hot. It's ready to be used. 
I got my chicken breast nice and coated on both sides. Okay, nice and coated on both sides. Now I'm just going to go right in and put in the rest of this uh, chicken breast here. I have three nice chicken breasts and I think they all can fit. Put this big one right down in the center. I'm gonna let this turn my heat up a little bit. I'm gonna let this chicken uh, go ahead and do its thing because I want it to get nice and brown on both sides. Let me wash my hand again. Every time you deal with chicken, especially if you touch the chicken with your hand, and not with a fork or tongue or anything. Make sure you wash your hands right away because chicken do carry bacteria. And we don't want, don't want to be spreading around salmonella from chicken, okay? That being said, now church girl's gonna go back and uh, let me just get this little flour off of this, my work area here. All right, now I'm gonna check my collard greens because I probably can add some more. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and add some more, and then I might probably add a little water. Remember I said I don't want a lot of water in my greens? I want to make sure, see how much water is, that my greens give off before I add a lot of water to it. Add some more collard greens. Don't be afraid to use all your greens. Don't think the pot is going to be overly filled because they will cook down. Everybody know greens cook down. Collard greens cook down, mustard greens cook Turn it, they all kind of cook down. So church girl is making up collard greens and kale mixed together. I like to eat my collard greens mixed with kale. Okay, some people mix their collard greens with cabbage and mustard and turnips, but I like to mix mine with, with kale. Everybody's different. And some, some people just like to eat their straight collards. But I do like to mix mine with kale. Then I'm gonna come back and cut up some onion to put over in here. And you all know I eat with my eyes, so church girl's gonna show up with some red bell peppers up in here. <laughs> to help with this color and with the flavor. Okay, I have a few more greens to put in here once those cook down. Okay. I think I'm gonna go ahead and now and add just a little bit of water. I think I can use a little bit of water. And I, I buy my water. I don't use my tap water to cook with. Because I don't. Church girl don't like her tap water because it's hard water. I like nice soft water. So I don't cook with my, my kitchen water. Okay, I'm gonna go in and turn this down now. Turn that chicken down. I don't want it to cook too fast. Okay, now I'm gonna let these greens do their thing. Okay. I'm gonna go back over and check this chicken out. Okay, it's cooking up really, really good. I'm gonna turn it down low, because what I wanna do, I wanna just start it on my marinara sauce. I'm not gonna make much marinara sauce tonight. I think this skillet here will hold what I need. Cause I'm, making, I'm not making too much marinara sauce tonight. I just want to use the rest of my, uh, I really want to use the rest of my mushrooms up. And I have them right here. I haven't chopped them up yet because I really forgot that you have them chopped up ahead of time. So I'll just do it right now. I'm not going to take long to chop up my mushrooms. They're very easy to work with. Okay. Now, this is how I, I do my, my mushrooms. When I first get my mushrooms, I'm going to use them. Before I chop them up though, I take a damp paper towel, real fast. Take a damp paper towel and I go around my mushroom just like so. So if there's any excess dust, a little grit or anything on it, this will wipe, wipe it right off, a damp paper towel. You do not want to emerge, never emerge your mushrooms in water. If you do, you're gonna ruin your mushrooms. So listen to the church girl now, do not 
merge the mushrooms in water. Just get you a damp paper towel, just like so, and pay attention to that base, especially the base and the top. But normally when I buy my, I don't normally, I'm not big on mushrooms. I don't use mushrooms a lot. Maybe this may be the second or third time in my whole, maybe the third, I've used them a few times in my life, but I'm not a big, big fan of mushrooms, but they really make your food taste really good. If you got a recipe that calls for mushroom, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid to um, use your mushroom because they will make the food taste really good. Just like so, get your damp paper towel and just go around that base, wipe it really good. Make sure that there's no sand or anything left on that mushroom. I know they're supposed to be clean when you buy them out of the store, but just in case they're not, Church girl ain't taking no chances. <laughs> so, I just make sure I just dust it off a little bit, making sure that nothing excess is left on that mushroom. I'm gonna get ready to chop these up now. I'm gonna go ahead and use all the rest of these because if I don't use them, I'll lose them. So, church girl don't wanna be losing nothing fresh that she can use. These are pretty clean. They're really not dirty. I try to buy, when I do have to buy something out of the store, like mushrooms or something like that, I try to make sure I buy the kind that I don't have to put a lot of work into washing because you cannot emerge mushrooms in water. All right? You just take this out of the way, put this in the trash. Now, while my meat is still um, cooking over there, I'm just going to go right in really fast, chop up these mushrooms. I'm going to chop these mushrooms just like so. You see how I'm doing it? But I'm going to come back again. I'm going to make these smaller than I did my uh, other marinara sauce. I left my mushrooms pretty. I chopped them up just like so, and I didn't cross chop them. I just left them just like this. This time, I want them a little bit smaller. So once I chop these up, I'm just going to go back and chop them smaller. It's all about the size that you want your mushroom. These are baby bellas. These are not the large mushrooms to begin with, but I still want to chop mine up a little bit smaller this time. I'm going to use all of these mushrooms because I do not want to waste any of them. And I won't be using all the marinara sauce, I don't think, on the chicken. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to preserve it and save it. So when I want some more marinara sauce, all church girl got to do is just pull it out. I can put it in the freezer and freeze it and just take it out. When I want some more marinara sauce because I don't believe in wasting anything, especially good food. And I know this uh, mushroom right here is way too much for me to uh, use tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and make up me a nice batch of marinara sauce. And when I cook my next steak or my next chicken, I'll go ahead and... Uh, but when I want to put some more marinara sauce over any of my meats, I'll have me some already made. All I'm doing now, I'm just going back and just kind of chopping these up a little bit finer. I don't, I don't want them so large. It's up to you. You can chop your um, mushrooms up any way you like. I just wanted mine chopped up a little bit finer this time than I had the other ones, okay? And now let me go back and check my chicken because I'm sure it's ready to turn over. I'm going to check my chicken here. Now when you're checking your meats, if you don't want to lose a lot of your juices in your meats, use some tongs. You can use a fork, but a lot of times when you stick your meat with forks, especially with steaks, you, your juices will start running right out because you're sticking it. So I try to use tongs, but I can use a fork. But you use a tongue and you catch your meat and you turn it over. That way, you're not sticking it with the fork. Oh, this is nice and beautiful on it. Nice and lightly coated brown, just like I want it. Lightly coated. I'm going to take this spoon here and take off this excess. Church girl likes to take off this excess, uh, whatever this is that cook off the side of your meat. I take it out of my skillet. A lot of the time. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just a habit that church girl has. I'm going to go ahead and turn over the rest of this chicken here. Turn it up a little bit. Because 
I do want it to fry nice and good, but not, I don't want it to fry hard. I just want it to get a nice coating, nice light brown coating on each side. Because when I make my marinara sauce, I want that sauce to have a nice, nice thick coating to it. This look really, really good. So you just let it finish cooking up on the other side. And then, I'm wondering if I need to um, make a, use a larger skillet because I do have a lot of mushrooms here. I'm chopping these up a little bit finer because I don't want the big pieces. Anybody have any tips on how I can uh, preserve, preserve my, preserve my mushrooms for a week or two? Let me know. Because they don't tend to last long. And if I don't use them, they'll go bad on me. And I don't like losing good food. So I'm going to go ahead and make up a nice thing of marinara sauce. Use what I need to use and put the others in the fridge. And if I need to, I'll put it in a nice Tupperware container. And I'll stick it right over in the freezer side of my refrigerator. And when I want to cook, when I want to pull out some marinara sauce, put over my meat, my beef, or my pork, or my chicken, I'll have it. All I need to do is just heat it up and make sure it's have the uh, consistency that I want. It doesn't take chicken breast long to cook, so I'm going to go back over here now and turn this eye down. Okay, I chopped up all my, all my, um, Mushroom, just like so. All my mushroom nice and chopped up. That's a lot of mushrooms, you guys. I probably shouldn't use that much, but I want to go ahead and make a big thing of marinara sauce because I do not want to lose, excuse me, this camera on this stand, and it always don't want to act right. So I've ordered another tripod so I won't have this problem soon. Okay. I'm hoping that's not um, trying to fix it where it won't be too shaky. I don't like to move because every time I move it, I tend to mess up. All right, that being said, now I hope you guys can see my chicken here. Frying up really, really good. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Uh -oh. When you're cooking your meat, don't be poking around with it because it's a stick. If it's stuck to the pan, that just means it's not ready to be turned yet. But once it's ready to be turned, it should pop right up off that skillet. I'm just going to turn this here. Move this skillet for a minute. Move that skillet for a minute. I work with my things. I have one more little bit to put in here. But what I'm trying to do, I want to take those on the bottom and put them on the top. Take the ones on the top and put on the bottom. I didn't think I had these many uh, greens. I probably should use a larger pot. <laughs> I only got just a few more. Oh, this pot is plenty big enough. Just a few more fresh kales to add to this uh, pot. And that'll be it. I'm going to cut up some onion. And I'll be adding a little onion to and bear pepper to my greens. I think I'm going to add a little more water because it's more greens than I thought I had. I just do not want them to be drowned in water. But I do want them to have enough water to cook. Next time, church girl is going to fry some collards to show you guys how I do my fried collard greens. Have you guys ever had fried collard greens before? They're not fried fried, but you know, they cook down in a frying pan with very, very little water. And they're very good that way also. Sometimes when I just want to cook just enough just for one serving or two servings, that's just a quick way to cook it. Okay, now I'm going to cover these greens back up. I'm trying to see if I need any more water in them. I don't think I do. If I do, then I'll add some more water. Cook 
Cover my greens back up. They smell really good. Turn the eye down a little bit. Now what church girl's gonna do now? I'm gonna check this chicken breast. It's about ready. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna end up turning it off so I can make my marinara sauce. Then I'm gonna come back and add my marinara sauce straight over with my chicken. And bring everything together. I have a whole lot of, uh, whole lot of mushrooms here. Push these mushrooms to the side because I want to chop up my garlic. I'm chopping this garlic up because I'm going to be putting this garlic over in my pan in a minute along with some onion. So it can um, start to saute together so I can bring the marinara sauce together. Just chop up the onion just like the onion and garlic, just like so. You don't want you don't want big big chunks, but you don't want it to be too fine. You want it to be where you can cook it. But when you bite down on it, you want a nice bite, but you don't want a big chunk of garlic in your mouth. Some people like big chunks of garlic. Church girl don't want to bite down on a big chunk. I love garlic, but I do want it to be chopped up fine. Just like so. Doesn't take long to chop up garlic. Hope you guys had a good have, had a good day today, and I uh, hope everyone had a good week, and is still having a good week. I've been in most of the day today. I went to the doctor a few times this week. So today I stayed in. And it wasn't feeling too good, but I thank God for touching my body and blessing me to get back in the kitchen again. And church girl is cooking up collard greens mixed with fresh kale. And I'm going to chop up some onion and bell pepper off in it. And I'm having uh, chicken masala, chicken breast masala. My chicken is all ready now. I'm gonna move it out of the way because I don't want to keep it on. It's nice and coated on both sides. It's nice and good on both sides. Try to let you guys see it. I really don't like moving this camera. Be so glad when I get my tripod. That's my chicken breast. Nice and brown on both sides, just like I wanted it. Nice and brown. I'm gonna um, turn it off. I'm gonna be adding my marinara sauce to this chicken breast. My collard greens are cooking up as well. They're coming along real, real good. I didn't want a lot of water in them. So they're cooking up really, really good in smoked turkey and bacon okay so now what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna get ready to um, get this get my marinara sauce to going I'm gonna change um, skillets and get something a little bit deeper because I'm gonna be making quite a bit gonna make my marinara sauce over in this pan here just rinsing out my skillet that I'm going to use. I changed my mind about the other one. I'm going to make my marinara sauce up in this because I'm going to be making enough. I won't be using it all, but I will be saving it. So when I need some more marinara sauce or something, I'll, I can just grab it out of the freezer and use it. A church girl do not believe in wasting good food. That being said, let me, get, let me get that going so I don't hold you guys too long. All right. I'm going to take this chicken, put it right over there out of the way because it's ready. Now to this marinara sauce, 
to get it started. I may have my own little recipe here. I had looked at some more recipes, but I kind of have my own. So I'm going to try to follow my own little guide. I pretty much remember how I like it, but I just don't want to forget none of my techniques. First of all, I'm going to put some olive oil and butter right over in my pan. I put the butter out already. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, saute up some butter, garlic, along with the onion and the bear peppers. I'm going to put it right over in this pan here. I have to make quite a bit, so I'm going to add some more. Okay, now I'm going to put this butter back up. Back up in my little butter safe. Now, church girl is going to add some olive oil, Greek olive oil, over to my pan here. And then, the next thing I'm going to do is saute my onion and garlic up together. As soon as this, as soon as this uh, butter and olive oil come together, melt down, I'm going to go right ahead and add in the uh, garlic, the piece of garlic, but I'll get it later, and onion. Oh, let me take my onion out. Last time I made my marinara sauce, I used sweet onion. This is what I want to share with you. I used this sweet onion. I'm not using this onion this time. I, I'm not using it because I don't want it to be too sweet. I'm going to use a different type of onion. I'm going to use this white onion. And I don't think it's too sweet, but let me just taste it. Remember, I said, don't be afraid to taste the food. Not even onion. You have a nice little sweetness to it, but I think it'll be all right. The recipe that I came up with for my marinara sauce, I use a white onion in it anyway, which is a sweet onion. This one, this scallop here, it still have a sweet overtone to it. But you can use whatever onion you like. Okay, I have plenty of onion. Church girl do not like running out of onion. Ever. Okay, my my uh, my uh, butter and garlic is already over there, but let me just chop up my onions here real fast. Then I'm going to go right in. And I'm going to marry saute these onions and garlic together. Then I'm going to be adding in my Mary, my Mary Nurse wine, cooking wine, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. And the chicken stock. Okay. If you, um, I try to encourage people to eat Eat at home much as possible. Eat fresh vegetables, fresh, fresh much as possible, because you'll feel so much better. When I I don't care for eating at restaurants. When I cook my own food, I tend to enjoy it better, and it tastes a lot better. And you know exactly what's in it because you're the one that cooked it. I eat out sometimes, very very rare, with my husband, and a lot of times the food has so much salt, and sodium and stuff in it. But when you learn how to cook your food at home, you'll know exactly what's in it. If you don't want a lot of salt, you don't have to use a lot of salt. Okay? Something you don't want in it, you don't have to put it in it. Add a little bit more onion here. I love onion and so do the, the man of the house. He loves onion as well and garlic as well. So I can't go wrong with the onion. Now I'm going to go right ahead and add this onion and, and bell peppers down now to my mixture, to my olive oil over here. It's all ready. I want to move some of these gadgets out the way. So just let me move this. Sometimes when you're cooking in the kitchen, you have to move things around. And this, this, this is another good um, brand of olive oil. It's very, very, very reasonable. So look for this olive oil in any of the supermarkets. It's a California brand, but it's very, very uh, reasonable. It's not expensive, and it's an everyday, for everyday use. You don't really want to use an expensive, good olive oil that you eat with your, with your cheeses and with your pastas and, and the olive oil that you put on the salads. 
Some of that olive oil can be very, very pricey. But you can buy you a nice, nice olive oil for everyday use and you won't break the bank. Okay, I'm just going to move my chicken out of the way because it's ready. I just don't want it in the way, that's all. The olive oil can just stay there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead now and add... I'm not going to add in my, my um, mushrooms yet. I'm only adding in the garlic. Give me my spatula. Where's the spatula, church girl? There's one. Add in the garlic and the onion. I'm going to let that saute down really, really good. And then I'll be adding in the mushrooms in just a few minutes. Meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and check my greens again. Let this saute up. I'm glad I switched over to a deeper, deeper frying pan here because uh, saute pan because I'm gonna be making more, way more than we need. But I tell you what, the marinara sauce will not be going to waste. Oh no, we'll be having it over some more steaks when I decide to make another steak. Have several in the freezer out there. So. Or I'll be having it over some, you can even put those with beef. Buy you up some beef, chuck beef, and I'll uh, make you some, uh, chop you up some beef, like beef stew meat. Cook it down and put it over you some nice marinara sauce, honey, over rice. And, you, and get you some veggies on the side, and you have yourself a, a good down-home meal. And it didn't break the bank. Okay? This is bothering me. I put a, I spilled a piece of, um. I got it. I'll clean off the floor later. Um, and you enjoy that. The marinara sauce has a very good flavor to it. Put that all the way on the eye there. So now I'm going to go ahead now. I know I'm going to need to go ahead and cut up some uh, more onions. I'm going to need some more onions. And I'm going to need some bell peppers for my greens, so. While I'm letting that saute up, I'm gonna take my greens real fast, and I'm gonna go ahead and chop up a little bit of bell pepper and onion, so I can put them in my greens. Do you guys like bell peppers and onions in your greens? I do. Church girl like bell pepper and onions in her greens. So just slice up me some bell peppers here. No certain way to do it, really. Just slice them up. I try to keep plenty of bell peppers on hand. Red, yellow, green, whatever uh, you still have. My favorite is red because they, they're, they're sweet bell peppers. Green, I love green too, but they're a little bit stronger. So depending on what kind of dish I'm cooking. But I, I love my food to taste good and to look good. I don't want to just... Be all bland and don't have no nice color to it. So don't be afraid to add you some uh, spices to your food. Onion, bell peppers, shallots, green onions. Don't be afraid. If you haven't tried it in your greens, give it a try. Cut up some onion off in there and some bell peppers off in there. It'll make a big difference to the flavor. Okay. I'm keeping the eye on my skillet over there. Doesn't take long to um, saute up onion and garlic. Okay, now that I have this done, I'm going to go ahead now and get back over here and check on this. Okay, I had some extra red bell pepper. I have plenty of bell pepper, but I had some extra pieces that I hadn't used. So I want to use those. I'm going to put those over my greens along with some onion. And just chop up the rest of this little bit of onion here. Just like so. I don't know what happened to my
okay. Now let me just check my they're just about ready for me to add my next ingredient, which will be the mushrooms. And then I'll be adding my marinara sauce or my stock sauce. I don't know which one I'm going to add first. Let's just see what I have for my notes. I'm going to add my uh, mushrooms. And then I'm going to add my uh, chicken stock. I think I'm going to go ahead and add my chicken stock second, and then I add my mushrooms next. Then I add the wine last. The marinara wine. Cooking wine. Oh, yeah, church girl is cooking with some marinara cooking wine. Okay, these are my collard greens here. They're coming together really, really good. I said I didn't want a lot of water in them, and I don't, but I may add just a tab. And I mean, if I do, it'll be just a little bit. gonna need some more onion now this is red onion there's a big difference between your onions that's what I want to share with you guys I had out a white uh, onion which is a sweet onion I want to put a little bit of this red one over in my my uh, my greens this gives it a good flavor but it gives it a little bit stronger flavor the red onion is a little bit stronger than the white and the yellow but it has a very very it's one of my favorites I'm just going to cut a piece off here. And I'm going to be chopping it up in a minute. Put it over in my green. All I'm doing now is just rinsing off this, this thing. Okay. Now I'm going to go back. I'm doing several things at a time. You guys see me keep adding water to my greens. That, that is because I do not want my greens to be swimming in water. That should be a plenty. I shouldn't have to add any more. Sometimes I see people cook their greens and they have so much juice off in it. So much water. Takes away the flavor and then we tend to overcook, overcook our uh, veggies. Church girl's not going to overcook hers. I want to be able to taste my greens. At the same time, I do not want to overcook them either. I'm just going to go ahead now and add this little bit, this pepper that I have and bear peppers to those greens. I don't want to make sure I don't get no mushroom off in my greens. Probably won't hurt it, but I it don't call for mushrooms. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to go over here and, and get started back with this... Uh, I'm gonna chop some more onions up in this green stone later. Cause we do like a lot of, quite a bit of onion in it. Ooh, those collard greens smell so, so good, you guys. Smell so, so good. I wanna show them to you so bad, but I'll show it to you in a little bit. Let them continue to cook. And now what, what I'm gonna do, now I'm gonna go in and add my, um, my chicken stock. I don't think I even opened it. I do have it ready, though. I'm going to use about a half a cup of chicken stock. Or I may use the whole, the whole can. I'm not sure. I'm going to go ahead and touch it. A lot of things I didn't do ahead of time this time. Because I wasn't sure if I was going to be feeling well enough to be in the kitchen. But God touched my body, and here I am. Okay. Short, they gotta reach some of these utensils. Okay, I got my measuring cup here. Remember, I told you it's very important when you're measuring your ingredients do not use a dry measuring cup for your liquids, and do not use a liquid measuring cup for your dry ingredients. Okay, if you do, your measurements is gonna be way off, and you don't want that. You'll be wondering what happened to my food. 
You either have too much of something in it or not enough of something because you use the wrong measuring cup. This is for liquids, okay? This is for liquids. I like to remind you all every once in a while. And these measuring cups here is always for your dry ingredients, for stuff like flour, different things like that. Anything that's dry. Anything wet, water, broth, milk, anything like that. This is what you use. Okay. This is my chicken broth. Now what I'm gonna do is add to my uh to my onion mix here. I have my onion mix. Now I'm gonna go in and add my chicken stock. I just want to make sure that I'm done the way I wrote it down. That's my chicken stock going in. And I'm trying to wonder if that's going to be enough because I'm making quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of sauce. I'm going to take this whole little skillet that I had out wherever I did with it and going to saute up my, real fast. What did I do with it over here? I'm going to saute up my, uh, mushrooms. That's, that's the next thing I need to do. So just let me put a little olive oil in this pan and saute up my mushrooms. Because I don't want to put raw mushrooms over in my, my stock that I'm getting ready. So I'm going to saute up the mushrooms first. And then I'll add it to my stock. Okay? Let that get hot. I'm going to take that oil a couple of minutes to get hot. In the meantime, while that's getting hot, church girls gonna go ahead and chop up the rest of these things really fast. I'm gonna move in a hurry here so I can get this all taken care of. These are just some more onion that I want to put over in my greens. That's all church girls is doing right now. Chopping up a few more onions because I want to add a few more to my greens. I think this will be a plenty right here. I love the flavor of different onions. If you know anything about onion and you know how to pick your onion, depending on what dish you're making and what flavor you want. Now, if you use sweet onion, those yellow onions and white onions, and you're using sweet, it'll make your food taste a little sweet. So that's fine if that's what you're looking for. But if you want a little stronger flavor, get yourself some nice red onions, okay? I love the white uh, sweet onions. Especially when you're making soups and um, putting on salads, or you want a nice broth, making a chicken noodle soup, drop just some white onion up in there to give it a very good, very good flavor. These are just onions I chopped up because I do want to add some more to my greens. So I'm going to go ahead and add them now while they're all back there. Uh oh, I don't want nothing popping, my, get my oil popping. Go ahead and put these in real fast. And that'll be enough onion over my greens. You all may not like onion over your greens, but church girl do. Okay, now all they gotta do is finish cooking up. My cornbread is already, I already got it cooked. I made it last night. Cause we was finishing off those squash that I had cooked the other day. So I made, made up some fresh batter of homemade buttermilk cornbread. So, cornbread is already cooked. This girl gonna have to put some cornbread. All right, now I'm gonna go in and go ahead and put this. I'm gonna put all of these beautiful, beautiful mushrooms, and I got them chopped up pretty fine because, like I said, I didn't want them as large as my other ones. It's my other marinara sauce. Tastes really good, but I just want these a little bit finer. It's all up to how, how small you want them or how large you want. Them, okay. See some big ones on there. I'm gonna go in and chop them down a little bit. Lots and lots and lots of mushrooms. I started to save some on the side and drop off with my husband's salad, but I don't normally put mushrooms in this salad, so I'm not gonna start. 
I have enough stuff going up in that salad already. <laughs> so church girl won't be adding no merch room to the salad. But I will be making up a nice batch of marinara sauce, and that's for sure. You know you can add merch room to your gravies too. Anytime you're making gravies for your meats. You got mushrooms and you, and you got extra mushrooms, you don't know what you want to quite what to do with them. Quick, make you some gravy. I want to add a little bit, a little piece of butter. I want to add a little piece of butter over to this uh, to my mushrooms there. Let them saute up. It doesn't take mushrooms long to cook. I don't want them to, to uh, cook too much because they're going to be going over in the marinara sauce anyway. And they'll finish cooking up in that. But I do want them to saute up really good. So now I have them over here sauteing up. Church girl is in the kitchen. I'm always happy when I can come in the kitchen and make a nice meal for myself and for the king. I like to cook. I don't eat a whole lot. Church girl don't eat a whole lot. <laughs> but I do like to cook. But I'm feeling up to it. I really do like to enjoy cooking. All right, just like so, let's go ahead and let that finish sauteing up. While I pay attention to uh, this marinara sauce here, I'm going to turn this front eye down a little bit. Let my back eye stay on medium high. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get ready to get my uh, masala wine. That's the next thing I want to get. It's that masala wine. Now when you're using this wine here, When you're using masala wine, listen to me closely now. This is cooking wine. See? Cooking wine. So they don't say, church girl, oh, they're drinking up some wine. <laughs> oh, no, but I do cook with it because you make your foods taste really, really good. Very delicious. Um, when you use masala wine, if you're going to make marinara sauce, make sure you pay close attention when you put it. And I'll show you what I mean over in your mixture because... We don't want to burn the house down. I'm not going to use much this time. I'm just going to use a little bit because last time I think I used a little bit more than I wanted to. So I'm not going to use very much wine this time. Okay. But this is my marinara wine ready. As I said, when you use a marinara wine, make sure you have that stove eye turned way down. Because if you don't, it can start to flame because of the amount of cooking alcohol you have over it. Oh, yeah. Now these greens is really cooking up. Coming together just like I, I wanted them to. I'll let you take another peek at that while my uh, chicken stock is coming together. My husband like uh, smoked meat, but you know, he never eat the smoked meat. I just use it for flavoring. We rarely eat it. I eat a little bit of it, but I can't eat it all, so I waste a lot of the meat. I use it for flavoring because Ken is not going to eat it. There's my greens cooking up really good. Put this back on the eye. Better turn it down a little bit. Church girl don't want to cook it up too fast. There's my collard greens with my smoked meat. Looking, looking really, really good. Want you guys to take a peek at that coming together. Those are my mushrooms over there. They're sauteing up. They're almost ready. Now, this is my stock. I'm going to add my mushrooms over to this stock right here. Then, I'm going to add my marinara wine to this stock. And let it come to a nice, nice, brothy, kind of thick. I don't want it loose. And I'm going to show you how I thicken it up. And then I'm going to be adding these beautiful, beautiful chicken breasts that I have already cooked waiting on the side over here. Three nice chicken breasts. They're going to be added to my marinara sauce. 
Again, that's my mercy room saute. Church girl is in the kitchen making homemade collard greens with smoked bell peppers, onions, and I'm sorry, smoked turkey, red bell peppers, and onions, and chicken breasts with marinara sauce. That's what's going on at the Ponderosa tonight. That's what's going on in the kitchen at the Ponderosa. I've been watching the weather back east and I noticed in Chicago last night it was snowing. And in, in DC, I think it's Washington DC, it's flooding there. I was surprised, I'm like, wow. Flooding in Washington, I mean, we gotta do something about this. Uh, as far as our ozone level is going and our, our uh, climate change, all those climate deniers out there, they better get a grip because California's on fire and flooding is in the East Coast. But we just trust in God to see us through. Okay, I brought this up a little bit closer. So hoping you guys can see everything. So now what I'm gonna do, this mercy room will sweat it down and saute it up really, really good. I'm gonna get ready to add it right over into my uh, stock here, my chicken stock. And I, before I do that though, I'm just wondering if I need to add the rest of that chicken stock because I do wanna make enough marinara sauce. I have a lot of mercy rooms. I think I will add a little bit more. I'm just gonna eyeball it. My chicken stock. I just eyeballed it and I add a little bit more to it because I'm gonna make quite a nice batch of, uh, nice, nice batch of marinara sauce. And if I need to add a little bit more of cooking wine, I will. After I taste it. As I said, don't be afraid to taste your food. Because if you don't taste your food, so you guys can see me a little bit. If you don't taste your food, you will, you will never know what's missing from it, okay? So don't be afraid to taste your food. So now, what church girl is going to do now, I'm going to get ready to go right ahead and add this... Uh, I'm gonna go right ahead and add my add my chicken stock. Now I'm gonna add my mushrooms. I think they're about ready. Because I did not want them to saute up, cook too much. I just want them to cook just enough to sweat down. They're gonna finish cooking over in the sauce. But I let them cook down another second while I add some fresh pepper to that black pepper to my uh, stock. I love, love, love fresh peppers. This is my peppercorn that I always use. This is a gourmet brand, which is red, white, and green. But black is just as good. So if you haven't tried whole peppercorn, try you some. It's very, very good. It's a big difference. You'd be surprised at the taste, even in pepper. I don't want to put too much. But try you some peppercorn. It's a big difference than just using regular black pepper, ground black pepper. Because I keep that pepper as well on hand. But when you're using pepper, um, when you're using peppercorn, it makes a big difference with your flavor. Okay, now I'm going to turn that back eye off because my my mercy room will sweat it down the pan. Before I add that, I'm going to go in get my sea salt ready. But I'm not going to add it yet because I want to taste it first to make sure. Make sure I don't want nothing too soft to sew out. Now I'm going to go in and add in these beautiful, beautiful mushrooms. Church girl is cooking up some more marinara sauce. I made it once. This is something that I don't make often. But I made it for my husband's steak, and he tend to like it. This time I'm going to go a little bit easy on the marinara wine. 
because I don't want it too sweet. But it was, he said the steak was really, really good. So tonight I'm making some more marinara sauce just to go over the chicken breasts. And I think I'm just going to put two chicken breasts in there. I may need to leave the other one on the side, but I think he'll like it. I think he'll like it. I may go ahead and put all of them in there. Okay, now. All I'm doing is going to put in the sink. Get it out of my way. I'm washing my hands one more time before I finish up. And I get ready to bid you guys a good evening. Once I bring this marinara sauce to a, to its final destination. Okay. Let me just check my greens one more time. They look really, really good. I'll be turning them off in a few minutes. Or I'll just leave them on real low and let them simmer. Because a little bit more cooking time is not going to hurt them. But I just do not believe in overcooking my vegetables. They look really, really good. And they're not, they're definitely not drowned in water. So much water takes away the taste. You cook all the taste out of your food. If you're not careful, you cook all the taste right out of your food. All right, got my hands all clean. Always remember to keep those hands impeccable clean in the kitchen. Don't ever, ever cook and not keep those hands clean. Especially anytime you deal with meat and poultry, keep those hands impeccable clean. Ooh, this looks really, really good. Really good. I'm really pleased with it. This is my marinara wine here. I'm going to be using a little bit of that flour. Not that much, but I will be using some. I'm going to show you, let this come up to a nice little, a nice little boil there. And while that's coming up to a boil, I'm going to get the knife and a little fork and a little spoon so I can test taste my food. I know my chicken tastes good. I really don't have to test taste them, I'm just being greedy. Chicken looks good. Tastes really, really good. I'm glad I didn't add any salt to this because I did season that. Um, I did season this chicken breast, so I'm glad I followed my mind and didn't add any salt. If I need any a little bit later, I'll add it then. But I did season this chicken breast. I let this chicken breast marinate overnight last night because I was gonna make it last night, but I was too tired. So I just let it marinate it overnight in the fridge. And now uh, that season had a chance to really come together. All I'm doing, I'm just turning the eye back on, bringing that breast back up to a nice little heat. So I can add it, get ready to add it over to my uh, marinara sauce. Okay, now this is what I'm getting ready to do. Anytime you're dealing with marinara sauce and wine, cooking wine, remember to bring that heat all the way down or move that. I can add some salt to my greens. Bring this heat all the way down or completely take this pan completely off the eye, just like so. Then go in and add your wine. Because marinara wine or, or most cooking wine, they have a high content of alcohol in that cooking wine. You can buy whipped alcohol or alcohol free. But if you're gonna buy the one that marinara cooking wine have a alcohol in it, you can't have the eye up high. Smell good though, because it'll flame up. And I always say, you do not want to burn your house down. Making marinara sauce. I don't nobody say, oh my lord, church girl house caught a fire. She was making some marinara sauce over there. <laughs> and caught the house on fire. So make sure that heat is down on nice and low. Have mine nice and low. I didn't put in that much. Um, I didn't really put in that much cooking wine this time anyway. But in any event, it doesn't matter how much you're using just to stay on the safe side. Always make sure that I is down. And as that, as that cooking wine cooked down, you can always slowly turn your heat back up, okay? 
But start out with it very, very low. Once you start bringing together your uh, sauce, you do not want to bring it together on high heat. Because trust me, it'll flame up. This look really, really good. I can slowly bring that back up in a minute. But I'm gonna wait just a second and get my spatula here. And I'm gonna check my meat. All I did with the chicken breast, the chicken breast is really cooked already. But I did want to bring it back up to a nice heat because I didn't want to add cold meat over to my over to my uh Then want to add cold chicken breast over to my sauce. So I just slowly bring it back up to the heat. Now what I'm going to get ready to do, I'm going to take this flour. Because this always, marinara sauce tend to be a little loose when you first get started. But I'm going to show you how to thicken it right up. See this? This is too watery. Shouldn't be watery like that. Marinara sauce should not be watery like that. It should be really nice and thick. So I'm going to go ahead and take me some. Some of that flour I got sitting on the side. Take this little glass right here. I'm gonna rinse it out first. Oh, your texture is gonna rinse it out. I rinse everything out before I use it. Even though it's clean, I just wanna make sure it's extra clean. <laughs> now I'm gonna take about a tablespoon or a tablespoon, a nice tablespoon now, a heaping tablespoon, just like so. I got measuring cups, measuring spoons, but um, I'm just going to use, I used about a tablespoon and a half flour because I want it nice and nice consistency. I do not want it to be loose. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some the broth. I'm not going to add water. You can add water to this, but I have a little, little broth left over and I have some beef stock in the refrigerator. You use whatever kind of chicken broth or chicken stock or beef stock that you want to. I wonder if I have too much in here. Maybe I'll take a little bit out. Remember, as you can always add, but you can't take out, take away. So I'm going to go ahead and add this rest of this stock. And if I need to add a little water, I can. But I didn't want to waste my beef stock, my chicken stock, I mean. I do have beef stock in the refrigerator. I'm gonna take this spoon. I have a whisk over there. If you want to, you can use a whisk. Use your whisk and make sure you whip this up really, really good. Just like so. Either use your whisk or a nice spoon or a fork or something. Just make sure whatever you do, make sure you whip it up really, really good. Get all the lumps out. Okay, you don't want no lumps over in over in your, uh, turn that down low, your stock. I'm going to add a little bit of beef stock. Or I can add a little water. It don't matter which one I use. Since I got this beef stock, I may be able to use this. Add this, uh-oh, my top. You wipe it off. Anytime you drop something on the floor, if it's a top, do not just take that top and put it back on. Always rinse that top off and dry it off really, really good. And then add it back to what you're doing, okay? If you drop something on the floor, wash it out, throw it in the sink. Do not use it. And make sure that, I'm making sure that this flour and water, I, mean, I got stock in here. It's blended in well together. Now you can use starch. The last time I made my marinara sauce, I used starch and it worked just as fine. But church girl like to use different stuff to see how it works, so I'll decide next time which one I like to use the best. Okay, just put my stock back in the refrigerator. Last time I used uh, chick corn, used my cornstarch, and it worked out real, real fine. If you don't have any cornstarch, flour do the same job. The biggest, most important thing is making sure you got it whipped up really, really good. You don't want no lumps left in your flour or your or your uh, cornstarch, whichever one you'll use, because you don't want any lumps in your, in your uh, marinara sauce, okay? If you have to look underneath your glass or your measuring cup, don't be afraid to look underneath the main thing. Make sure that you have it all 
all blended together. Before I add that, I want to taste my, I want to taste my mixture here and make sure I have enough wine, cooking wine in it, marinara wine in it, before I add my stock. Smells good. So I'm going to go ahead and taste this. Ooh, that tastes really, really good. I'm glad I didn't add any more wine, and I'm hoping I have enough wine in here. So far, so good. If I do, I don't think it hurt if I need to go back after I add this. Uh... I'm not going to add all of this. I'm going to add this a little bit. And let's thicken up. This is my tasting spoon. Never, ever double dip. If you taste your food, get rid of the spoon. And get another one. Or wash the same one out before you use it again. If you notice, I did not add all my thickening agent yet. But if I need it, I'll come right back and add it to it, okay? So far it's thickening up really good. And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna pour, I'm not gonna pour my marinara sauce over this chicken. I'm gonna take the chicken and place it over in the marinara sauce. Because I have a little bit more oil than I want over where the chicken, uh, where I brown the chicken in. And I won't need any more of this because I did, remember I did uh, lightly flour that chicken. So that will also help thicken up my marinara sauce because that chicken breast is flour. I'm gonna get that little spoon, uh, rinse this one out again. I'm gonna taste that one more time. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken to it and bid you guys a good evening. I do wanna taste it again. This is my tasting spoon. Only thing I need to add to this is probably some more cracked black pepper. That, that's about it. I don't think I need any more marinara uh, wine. Taste it one more time. And bring this heat up to a boil. It's thickening up really good. As I say, don't be afraid to taste your food. Oh, that's so good, you guys. I'm not kidding. Now, I'm not the type of cook. Church girl ain't gonna lie to you. If it ain't good, I'll tell you, I missed the mark this time. Church girl have to come back and do that over again. I'm not gonna pretend something good if it's not good. I don't play those type of games. This look really, really good. I'm gonna show it to you before I add the chicken to it. But it looks so, so good. Hope you guys can see it. There it is. It came together really, really good and it's nice consistency. Very nice consistency over in that marinara sauce. Don't be afraid. Uh-oh, I don't want to lose my camera. Don't be afraid to uh, try different things, try different recipes. And there is the chicken breast I'm going to be adding right over into this marinara sauce in just a minute. Okay, my cornbread is all ready. I made it last night. Take a check on the greens. And there you have it, my greens. I'm trying to get it so you guys can see it. Pot is kind of deep. There it go. My greens came together really, really good. I got them down real low. They pretty much ready. I just got them simmering really, really low. There you have it. Hopefully next time I'm in the kitchen, I have my tripod and I won't have to go through having to move this camera. Like so. Those are my, my turnip, I'm sorry, my collard greens and kale mixed together with bell, red bell peppers and onion. And I'm very proud of my marinara sauce and my chicken breast. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get those chicken breasts right over in that, uh, get those chicken breasts right over in the marinara sauce as soon as I get this camera back straight.
Okay. Let me just cover my greens back up here. Remember I told you I didn't want my greens drowning in water? Because when you cook the greens in too much water, to me you cook all the flavor away. So just let them take their time and cook. And if you need to add a little water, you can always add a little water. But don't start out with a whole pot. Have your greens swimming in water. Okay, let that cook. Uh-oh. Having a time dealing with these cameras. I can't wait to get my tripod. Okay, now, this is really good here. Nice, nice, thick consistency, just like I like it. Now I'm gonna go in and take these breasts, turn them off, and I'm just gonna layer them right over in the, in the, uh, I'm not gonna add any in that grease yet, because I don't want the grease. I don't need any extra grease. Church girl do not need any extra grease over in the marinara sauce. I don't want any extra oil. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and add the uh, chicken breast. I'm gonna use tongs. Like I said, if you've got tongs, it's best to use tongs than a fork. That way you won't be poking your meat. So I take my chicken breast and just layer it right down over into that marinara sauce. And ooh, it looks so, so good already. <laughs> got me, got me hungry over here. I haven't really eaten a, uh, a full meal in about two or three nights because I haven't had a big appetite. But I think church girl gonna eat tonight. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna make all this good food tonight and not eat any. May not be but a little bite, but at least it'll be a little bit. I'm gonna nestle this right down over in this marinara sauce. And I'm here to tell you, it smells good, and Lord knows it, it looks really appealing. Last time I made my marinara sauce, I put some red bell pepper sauce in there. I'm not gonna do that this time. It looks, it looks nice. Remember I told you, if it doesn't look good, look all bland, church girl be a little slow eating it. <laughs> I like for my food to look good as well as taste good. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Not a thing wrong with that. That being said, I'm going to get ready to bid you guys a good evening. And hope you guys watch this video and try this recipe out. Even though I pretty much cook from scratch, I still tell you what I do as I go. Main things when you're making your greens. One big thing about fresh greens, make sure they're washed very, very good, okay? Don't nobody want to be eating down on no grit. That being said, church girls, I'm great to be with you all a good evening. Everything is ready now. I'm just going to move this skillet out the way. And then I'm going to be with you guys. A, going to be with you guys a good evening. Until the next time. In the meantime, please go over to Cooking with Church Girl. Comments. Subscribe, share, and like my channel. I really do this for therapy, for no other reason than therapy. And I like cooking, enjoy cooking, and talking to you guys. <laughs> so keep me lifted up in prayer. And you know the church girl will pray for you as well. Everything is finished up now. I'm going to give you one last peek. And bid you all a good evening. I'm really, really pleased at the way this marinara sauce came out and this chicken. I might have been a, I might have, did a much better job with this than I did with the steak. <laughs> but hubby said the steak was good, so that was good enough for me. Long as the king of the Ponderosa enjoyed my cooking, I'm pleased. Okay. This is smothered in, in a nice, nice, nice marinara sauce smothered with mushrooms, garlic, and onion. I'm going to let you guys take one last peek. And church girl's gonna be it's a good evening. So try this recipe. Make yourself some nice collard greens. And if you haven't tried to mix them with anything, try mixing them with kale. Kale is very, very good for you. It's very, very good for you, for your body. Have a lot of good properties in there. It's a fighting agent against cancer, it's full of iron and calcium and all those other good things that your body need. You can find it in your dark green leafy vegetables, okay? So try to mix your collard greens. Try some kale if you haven't tried. 
You can mix it with any greens you like, but if you haven't tried it with kale, give it a try. That's my finished product of my collard greens. Let me just get it this away. Hope you guys can see it. Hard for me to tell if you can see it. Okay, that's the finished product of my collard greens. They came out really, really good. Church girl is pleased with the collard greens. And I'm really, really pleased with the way my smothered chicken breast in marinara sauce. Smothered with nice, nice, nice fresh mushrooms, garlic, and onion. And of course, the marinara sauce will brought that flavor all together with some beautiful bell pepper, gourmet peppercorn. Brought it all together. All right. I didn't show you guys my homemade cornbread. I did make my homemade cornbread last night. <laughs> Let me just show you. Church girl know how to make cornbread too now. Oh, yeah. There's my buttermilk cornbread. Hubby ate a little piece with his squash last night. And he said the cornbread came out really good. But that's my cornbread. I don't have to cook any cornbread. So dinner is going to be served at the Ponderosa. So that being said, until next time, church girls going to get ready to say, bid you guys a good evening. Bid you guys a good evening, like I always say. Anybody desire prayer, put it in the comment box. And I'll go to the throne for you. Because I do believe in the power of prayer. And God does answer prayer, okay? God does answer prayer. So if you need prayer, or you just ask for, just want your know, prayer. Request it, just put, put it down in the bottom. Put this on the back. Put my bread back in the oven. In the comment section, you don't have to go into detail. Sometimes people just feel like they need to talk. But I always say, just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right. You don't have to tell the church girl. And you really don't have to tell nobody else. Just tell Jesus all about it. And he will come to your rescue. Until next time, we're going to bid you good evening. He has done great things for me. Great things. Great things. He has done great things for me. And for you. For that, I am grateful. Until next time, bid you good evening. God bless you. With the love of the Lord. Church Girl signing off. Please remember to go over to Cooking with Church Girl. Subscribe, share, and like. God bless.